If you go to WordPress website, you're looking to take online bookings, appointments, sell tickets to events, and so on. Amelia is a very popular choice. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the key features that Amelia brings to the table to help you make a more informed decision. Now, this is a sponsored video by Amelia, but as always, there's going to be no opinions expressed. I'm simply going to demonstrate how these features work, then you can make a more informed decision for yourself. So let's say you have a photography studio. As part of that, you're probably going to want to take online bookings. You may want to have recurring bookings and so on. Well, we can do that with Amelia, and that's the first thing I'm going to show you. I've already created a couple of services and grouped them together under photography. If we open any of these up, we can find all the details. So inside here, you can see we can split things down into the details, duration, and pricing, and so on. So let's take a quick look at the options that I've set up. First of all, we're going to give it a name, which is kind of obvious. Next up, we choose the category. Now, in this example, I've got two categories, consultation and photography. These are just groups of different services we want to group together. So for this example, photography makes sense. Then we've got the option for recurring appointments. Now, recurring appointments is a really great way of being able to book things in advance. You may have clients that want to book multiple sessions. This allows you to do just that. And if we open this up, we can choose between various different timescales. Disabled, to remove it completely, or where they can choose what they want, or we can limit it to daily, weekly, and monthly. This means we get total flexibility of the duration or the gaps in between each of the bookends. We'll leave this set to all for this example. Now, next up, you can choose how things are handled if that date and time is not available. You can see we can disable this completely, or we can choose to have it the closest date before or after or both. For this example, we'll leave this set to before and after to give total flexibility. Next, you can choose how you want to handle payment. Do you want them to pay just for this booked appointment or do they have to pay for everything? We'll leave it for the first appointment and then they can pay incrementally moving forward should they want to for this example. Now, if you have multiple people working in your business, you can simply choose the employees that you want. In my business, there's only me, so I've chosen me from the list. Next up, when we hop over to the duration and pricing tab, we can set a couple of important things up. How long the session is for and how much this session is going to cost. You can then put a buffer before and or after. So the last thing you probably want is to have one session end and then go straight into another session. So you can put a little bit of a buffer zone either side of the appointment. And again, you can choose from a range of different time slots from 30 minutes right there up to multiple hours. We'll leave 30 minutes either side. Then you can choose the maximum capacity and the minimum capacity. How many people do you want in in this particular session? This is a kind of private thing, so we're going to leave this set to one for either side. Then if you want to, you can apply custom duration and pricing, or we can apply a deposit. So if you want to make sure they either pay a deposit or they pay full up front, you can kind of control that here. We'll leave the deposit turned off. We'll get full payment. And if you want to apply a gallery of images, you can do that. And then we've got extras. Now, extras is a nice little way that we can cheat and add extra little features in. So, for example, they may want to book the headshot service and they want a photo session review. So we could add another extra here and we can choose what we want from it. We can specify a custom duration. We'll set 30 minutes and we'll say the price for this is going to cost them £50. Maximum quantity, we'll leave as one, but again, you can customize this if you want, and you can drop text in for description and or HTML if you want to switch between the two to customize the output. So pop a little description in. You can, if you want to, set this as mandatory, and if you want to add more, you can add more additional services. Up to you. And finally, you've got the settings, and this is where we can control how people will pay for it, those types of things. So if we come into general, for example, we can choose what status this will automatically be applied to, whether it's automatically approved or pending, those types of things. You can see pending or approved. You can choose the minimum time required before booking. You kind of get the idea what most of these do. And also the duration that they can actually set. So this is set to 365 as default. If you want to change that, you can hop over into the overall settings for Amelia and customize those values. And if you want to, you can send them over to a different page afterwards. So you may want to send them to a custom thank you page or maybe even a page with an embedded video that says, during this session, these are the things we recommend that you do and bring with you. It's a great way of being able to inform people what you want after they've made the purchase. And then speaking of the purchase, you can see we can choose the payments. So in this example, we're going to use on-site, so they'll pay on-site. But we will take a look at some of the payment options later. So if you want to handle that through Stripe, PayPal, and so on, you can enable that directly inside you and take the payment online during the booking phase. 
Finally, you've got the integration then. So you can set things up. So if this was selling a consultation, for example, you may want to have a head to head beforehand. You could use Zoom when well, you could enable that directly inside you. But for now, we've got everything we need set up. We'll hit save and we've now created our service all set up. So now we've got our service set up with the ability to have recurring bookings. Let's take a look at this on the front end and see how it all works. So this is our booking page. First of all, we can choose the service that we want. So currently everything is listed. So we'll choose photography and our headshot. So we'll click continue. And now we can choose the optional extra of that photo review session. So let's say, yes, we want it. And if anybody doesn't know what it means, click the learn more and there's the information about it, the duration and the content we put in explaining what this service is. Hit continue. And now we can simply choose the date that we want this. So for example, if we jump over and we'll say we want this to be on Wednesday the 1st, and we'll choose the time and we'll click continue. Now this asks us, do you want to repeat this appointment? So this is where the recurring appointments comes in. We'll say, yes, we do. So now, when do we want to repeat this? Do we want to repeat this every single day, every week, every month? You kind of get the idea. So we'll say, repeat one week, Wednesday is fine, and then we can choose when this will end. We can choose to end on a specific date. So for example, we may want this to run the entire month, at which point we can choose that, or we can choose the number of occurrences. So we may say that we want this to happen three times, and then it'll give us information underneath about the appointment repeats. Hit continue. That will now give us an overview of the first appointment and all the repetitive appointments. And we can open these up if we want, and we can change parameters. So if we wanted to change the date, the time, you can do all that directly here. Then once we're happy with all those recurring options, we'll click continue. This allows us to fill out the information because we've got on-site payment. When we click continue, that'll take us through to the standard payments, tells us how much this is going to cost, and then we can move forward by clicking continue. And that will now place the appointment or appointments in this case, and then the payment will go through and everything will be associated to our dashboard. So we can take it one step further, we can package things together. So where we've got our photography sessions, we could go ahead and create a package. So let's do that. Let's jump into the packages. And you can see I've already created one previously, but let's add a new one in. Let's give this a name. This is going to be our photography session for our weddings. We can set a duration inside here if we want to. We're going to leave this unlimited to give total flexibility. But again, you can set this up to be days, weeks, months, or a specific date. And again, we've got the ability to add in a description for this particular package. I'll drop a little description in. You can also limit the package purchases per customer should you want to. So you can open that up and choose the number of packages, the time frame, and the period. But we're going to leave that turned off for now. Let's apply a, an image. This wedding one looks pretty good. Then let's jump over to the services. And this is now where we can pick the services you want to include in this package. So let's open our services up. For this, we're going to choose a pre-wedding shoot, and we're going to choose the photo session review. The headshot doesn't make a lot of sense in this example. So once we've done that, we can now do some other things. We can limit the number of appointments. So again, we can set this to be a maximum number of appointments. So we can say we may want to set this to two as a maximum. And then you can choose the number of appointments for the pre-wedding shoot and also for the photo sessions. And you can also control the minimum and the maximum number of bookings that are available or required. So minimum, we can set to zero. Maximum, you can also set one, two, three, depending upon what you set to your number of appointments. So that's the packages we've grouped together. Next, let's handle how we want the pricing. Now you can choose a custom price if you want, or you can choose calculated price. Now a custom price allows you to set a specific value to this. However, if you've got multiple services, you may want to just group those prices together. So for that, we'll say calculated price, and this will then show you we've got a pre-wedding shoot and the number of photo session reviews. In this example, one photo shoot and two review sessions, a total of 300 pounds. You can set a deposit payment from a fixed amount or a percentage. Let's say we want to put a percentage and we'll set this to be 50%. You can allow the customers to pay the total amount if they want to. So I would say that makes sense. And then if they don't, if they just pay the deposit, then the recurring amount will be paid on site in this example. Again, we can add multiple images and we can come into settings. And again, we can handle what happens. And again, we can choose how the payments are handled. Do you want to allow payment via a payment link, which will be included in any or all emails? If you choose that option, you can see that tells you where do you want to redirect afterwards. We'll disable that in this example. And we'll choose on site. We'll choose save. And we've now created a new package. So now we can use that on our site. So now I've created a page to handle everything for us. You can see now we can go and book our photo shoot. So we'll click continue. We'll choose the date that we want and the time. 
add our next service. And again, add the time in. Click on continue. And now we've got our pre-wedding shoot and our photo session review all set up, the times, the dates, and everything we want. Click on continue one more time. Simply go and confirm. And you can see that handles our payment and everything. And we can now add this to a calendar should we want to, or we can just click on finish. And that's now added in that new booking with those package details included. Now I mentioned a little earlier that we've got multiple different options when it comes to payment gateways and the options that are kind of associated with those. Simply head over into the settings, open up the payments section, and in there you can see we can now can configure all the payment options that we need. So we can set things like the currency and so on, all pretty self-explanatory. Now, if we scroll down a little bit, you'll see we've got on-site payment, but there are additional options here as well. So we can do things like allow payment via payment link. So when we send emails out, we can send links in there that allow payment to be handled. Select that option, and you can see that opens the options up there so we can copy and paste that information over. You can also go in and set up the different kinds of payment gateways. Let's go and open up the PayPal. Now, once you open this up, you can enable this as a payment gateway. We'll choose the option to enable it. And then underneath, you can see we can switch between the live mode and the sandbox mode. So if you want to test things out, sandbox is the easiest way. All we need to do is click to enable that, pop in your test client ID and the test secret and any other information you require based upon whatever payment option you choose. Hit the save and you have that available. So now if we come back over to any of our services, events, etc., we can choose this as a payment gateway option. Let's open up the consultation, head over to settings, and in there you can see we've got payments. Choose the option from there, or we can enable PayPal. Once we enable it and hit save, that's now been added. Now, if we go and place a booking, we'll select all the normal information. Then we go through all the details, click on continue to go through the payment options, click confirm. And now when it comes to the payment options, we can choose on-site payment or any of the other payment methods, in this example, PayPal. And again, you can see we can choose what options we want from there, make our payment, and that'll go through whatever the chosen account is. So all these payment options should give you more than enough control, and you can apply this to coupons, packages, services, so much more. It's all integrated directly into the payment options. Now let's talk about events and the custom pricing options that they offer. I've created a couple of events already, but let's go and edit one of these. Hop over to the pricing section, and you can see we've got some basic pricing options. We can set the ticket price, and we'll say we've got 50 tickets available. We now have 50 tickets at £20 per ticket. But what if we want to offer different prices for different package deals? For example, we may have a special VIP, we may have a standard entry, we may have one for old age pensioners. You kind of get the idea. So what we're going to do is we're going to open the custom pricing option, and then we're going to open the custom pricing tab. Now, once we do that, you'll notice that our previous pricing structure is now ghosted out, so we can't make changes. And it's no longer being used. It's going to be overridden. Now we can create custom pricing packages. So let's say we want to have a VIP ticket. This is going to be priced at £40, and we're going to say we've got 20 of those available. We'll add another pricing category. This is going to be standard, which is the £20 one, and we'll say we've got 20 of those available. And finally, we'll add one in for our older age group, and we'll say this is going to be £15, and we've got 10 of those available. Okay, so now we have different tickets available to us. Let's save this, and let's go and take a look at that event on the front end. So here's all the events we have, and you can see this is the one we've just been working with, with ticket prices from £15. If we open this up, this will now show us all of the ticket pricing options and the number of spaces available. So we may want to add in some tickets, and we'll say we want 108p, we can continue, you kind of get the idea. But there's a lack of flexibility in there for some use cases, so we can override this and make it even more flexible. Let's come back into our pricing for our event, and we're going to come down and we're going to choose the option for maximum allowed spots. And what this is going to do is it's going to retain these pricing structures of the VIP standard OAP, but it's going to override the number of spots available. So we'll just choose maximum allowed spots, we'll set this to 50, and now what we're doing is we're saying we're using any of these prices, the VIPs and so on, and we're going to limit the tickets overall to 50. So they can be made up of whatever combination. Coming back over to the front end, if we open things up, everything looks basically the same. The only key difference here is that we can make up any combination when we actually purchase anything for the events. And then once you've actually gone through and made a purchase, you can come over to your events and you'll see that we now have the number of tickets that have been sold out of the overall total. And we can also open up the attendees and find out information about those attendees. 
and we can manage them if we need to as well. And we can find exactly what tickets they purchased. So everything we need is contained inside you. So making the whole flexibility when it comes to working with events, really, really easy. Another important feature when it comes to working with Amelia and events and tickets and all those kinds of things is having integration with various different tools. If we hop back over into the settings section, you'll see we've got integrations. Opening this up will show us all the different kinds of integrations we have and we can easily input the information to connect everything up. So for example, if we want to use Google Calendar, Outlook Calendar, or if we're dealing with things like video calls using Zoom, we can simply choose the integration from here, drop in the relevant information, and then we can connect that up to the actual service we're offering. Then all we need to do is connect the dots. So for example, let's say we've set up Zoom. Let's use one of our services as a good example. Let's open this service up Go to the settings section and there you can see we've got integrations. We can open the integration up and anything we've got connected up, we can simply just toggle on or off. So for this example, if we had Zoom connected, we'd ch just check the toggle, that will connect everything up, we'd hit save, and now we can actually do this via Zoom and all the relevant information will be sent over as part of the actual purchase process and the email sequence that follows afterwards. It's very, very powerful, very easy, and we can integrate this with so many different options. That's basically what I wanted to cover in this video. Now this just scratches the surface of all of the features that you have available. I would recommend checking out the Amelia website, link is in the description, and also take a look at the YouTube channel where they've got lots of great videos that will go into more detail about all of the different services, features, functions that are included. Again, I'll link to that in the description down below. As always, if you have any comments, questions, or feedback, drop those in the comment section. My name is Paul C, this is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.